we are going to talk about how I increased my open rates, my email open rates, one of the most important metrics in all of online business, online marketing, how I increased my open rates by 76.7% literally overnight with almost no extra effort. So I want to know from you guys in the comments, if you want to know how we did that, if that sounds like something you're interested in, like, oh, I don't know, you want to increase your open rates, you want to get 76.7% more eyeballs on your content, drop me a big old all caps, heck yes, or whatever you want to drop there in the comments and let me know. Now, here's like two years ago, actually, gosh, it was now four years ago, I began studying copywriting from uh, with Ray Edwards. Uh, who's now one of my dearest friends in the online marketing world. And I, I, I was studying like how to get more opens, how to get more, uh, you know, clicks, how to just get more, you know, how to have better email copy. Right. So I implemented his strategies. My open rates climbed a little, they climbed a little, about 25%. Like, you know, not a bad, not a bad jump. I was, I was happy. You know, I was happy with how much they had climbed. Um, my click rates almost doubled after I started working with him. Now, I highly recommend that you learn the skill of copywriting. In fact, why for a second straight week, we're going to be giving away the best book on copywriting to whoever leaves the best comment today. It's called How to Write Copy That Sells. How to Write Copy That Sells by the aforementioned Ray Edwards. And we're going to be giving that away today. Now, I highly recommend that we, uh, that you learn that, that you actually learn that skill, but there's a simple strategy that you can use to nearly double your open rates. And like I said, it's almost overnight. The simple strategy was this, and it is so simple that when I say it, you're going to be like, uh, what <laughs> it's that, like, it's that simple, right? I mailed to my unopens. Now, <laughs> every single email was resent some multiple times. Now, I say 76.7%, but it could actually be so much more if you follow what we teach today. It takes less than two minutes to schedule a resend. And one resend got an additional 76.7% people. So almost doubled. So I say nearly doubled. 76.7% more people reading my emails just from that simple strategy, just sending one resend. Now, my name is Matt McWilliams. If you don't know me, it's nice to see you. Make sure you leave a comment. Let us know where you're joining us from. I'm joined today by my co-host and uh, resident, resident sender of unopens. This is the guy. This is the guy who does all the actual work behind sending to the unopens. Is that my official title? Sender of unopens. You are the S-O-U. Wait. Yes. <laughs> so I had to think about that. The SOU, yes. Mark Sievercraft, guys. Welcome, Mark. Uh, let Mark know you love him. Even if Please. you don't, just Always. say you love him in the comments. <laughs> Give him a big, big, big shout out. Again, like I mentioned, since we're talking about email copywriting today, I want to give this book to one of you. I see Phil is on and Phil won this book last week. So I, it just made sense to do it a second straight week. Do it a second straight week. So we're giving away how to write copies that sells. Very little of what we talk about today is based on Ray's book, but my general copywriting knowledge, my getting opens in the first place, my getting clicks in the first place comes from this guy. In fact, um, I was texting with him this morning and I, well, I was texting with him this morning. That was a totally different thing. Um, I was texting with him this morning, letting him know we were going to give away his book. And, um, and he was like, I don't remember, let me see if I can pull it up. What did he say here? Um, oh yeah. Okay. Whatever did I do to deserve so much free publicity from you? And I responded back with, oh, I said, all you are is awesome. That is all. You know, you <laughs> so, know what we should do, Matt? I, yeah. I just thought of this. You'd mentioned that next time I'm in Spokane, I'm just going to go get a bunch from him. So we don't have to keep buying them from Amazon. We should just have him randomly sign like five of them. Oh yeah. Let's do some signed books. And then from, randomly from somebody will get a signed one and you'll just never know. Yeah. If you're gonna get a oh, and by the way, I've got, a, I told you, Mark, I've got a signed book from Michael Hyatt for you from last week. I'm not mailing it to you. I'm going to see you next week. 
Yeah, why don't you just bring it Just as long to get to you mailing it as it would for me to bring it to Phoenix. All right, so guys, an unsigned copy. Wait, is it signed by Chip? No, it's not. Okay. (laughs) I was like, I know he signed a few copies for me back in the day, but I've already given those away. An unsigned copy of how to write copy that sells. (laughs) Um, It sounds different when you refer to it as an unsigned copy, right? I was going to say, now they feel like this one's not as exciting as the ones that are going to be coming up. (laughs) So, So here's the deal. Again, we're giving this away so that we can uh, teach you how to do copy today we're going to talk about how to get more opens using that very simple method now this is the final week of our ultimate guide to monetizing a small email list remember you can access the whole guide at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash small mattmcwilliams.com forward so speaking of phoenix there's a lady texting me right now about yes we got a great deal in that awesome house um all right so Sorry, that's what happens when you do a Facebook Live, and I've got my computer right here. As I see text coming in, <laughs> can we answer Gwen's question? Gwen asked, "What's going on in Phoenix, Matt?" Uh, PLF Live, Jeff Walker's big event. So. I was just gonna say it's warmer than it is in Washington State or Indiana. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, oh, okay. So let me get back on track, and then I've got some cool stuff to share because I, I kind of see it. Still, we'll get into today's topic. So, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash small. Uh, if you want to get Facebook Messenger updates, we still got some more content. In the ultimate guide, you want us to tell us when it comes out, go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash UG. Mark's dropping all these links in the chat and we'll let you know when we have new content. Now, as I mentioned, today we're going to share five techniques for mailing your unopens. But first, I want to share a couple of other things with you. Then I want to share some stats with you. They're just, they're like, they're mind boggling, right? They're mind boggling. What's that from? Anchorman? Yeah. All right. So I mentioned text with Ray last week. Guys, I'm getting ready to share a tool later on that I haven't shared. Well, and I may have shared it in like a Facebook group or something if you're in one of our yeah. Facebook groups, but I haven't shared it publicly yet. Mainly because uh, you really just came across to... it a few days ago. What's that? Mainly because you just came across it. Uh, I came across, uh, yeah, I was texting with Ray this weekend and then listened to his podcast and he talked about it and it's just like, this tool is mind blowing, guys. It's going to blow you away about repurposing your content. So I'm really excited to share that. Um, also, I got a podcast series coming out, guys. Speaking of warmer places, awesome places, an amazing company. I had the uh, awesome privilege last week. I joked at the end of the week at uh, breakfast. I joked that, uh, quoted Dave Ramsey. I said, sometimes this week I felt like a wiener in a steakhouse because, you know, I was hanging out with um, it was four of the top affiliates for Michael Hyde. So it was Michael, me, Jeff Walker, and Amy Porterfield. Um, our spouses and a couple other people were at Blackberry Farm in Tennessee. If you don't, if you've never heard of Blackberry Farm, just Google it, look it up. It is literally my favorite place on earth. And I know it's Michael and Gail's favorite place on earth. And I learned so much about so much for online business. So I've got, I think I recorded eight, maybe nine podcast episodes about wow. my takeaways from that stuff that. I learned some revelations that I had, some stuff that I learned from Jeff Walker, some stuff I learned from Amy Porterfield, some stuff I learned from uh, the general manager of Blackberry Farm. We actually got a session with him and just some really, I don't know, guys, at least for me, it was mind-blowing stuff. So look for those podcast episodes. It'll be, uh, that'll start sometime in the next week. And it's, I think I ended up recording eight episodes of just amazing, amazing content I'm looking forward to sharing with you. But today we're going to share five techniques for mailing your unopens. Now, I mentioned those stats. Let's take a look at those those stats here real quick. Let me pull those up. All right. Um, all right. So I just want to make sure I got, I'm old, I pulled 57 online marketers and I asked them a simple question. Do you mail your unopens? Now, these range from people with list sizes of like a thousand, you know, part-time bloggers, uh, guys doing $20,000 a year, you know, smaller lists to multi-million dollar, you know, deca-million dollar businesses with like 100,000 people on their list. Here's what I found. And Mark, I'm, if you can share these in the comments, it's gonna, this is going to blow your mind. Only 16% mail, regularly mail their unopens. Now, regularly, I defined as half or more of your emails went out to your unopens, like they mailed their unopens. 16% regularly mailed their unopens. 22% did so on 25 to 50% of their emails. 7% did so on occasion. So total it up 16 plus 22 
plus seven is 45 percent only 45 percent of these online marketers many of whom are big names with massive lists doing millions and millions of dollars of sales many of whom are medium-sized doing 100 to 250 thousand dollars a year and many of whom are part-time you know there's a nice little mix there these are a lot of these people are names that you would know and more than half of them had never mailed unopened not even on one email not one email not on an autoresponder not on a blast not on a promotional email not on a whatever right like none of them now i took those numbers and i narrowed it down this even this blew me i mean i i just i couldn't believe this right i looked at only the top people in that list there were 40 people out of the 57 who had made more than a hundred thousand dollars the year before so these are the top the cream of the crop um i don't know why that just made me think of the song house of pain the cream of the crop the rise to the top anyway um okay focus <laughs> um i just randomly turn like things i'm saying into house of pain lyrics mark apparently <laughs> um this is what happens. Like I'm really hyped up today to share this guys. So I'm like all over the place. I right, see so the top, the top, top 20%. So that's eight regularly mailed unopens. So more than half of their emails went to their unopens. Another 20%, eight did so on 25 to 50%, 15%. So I don't know, that's six, maybe, I guess it's roughly the number. I don't know. There's some rounding in here. Um, did so occasionally. almost half of the top online marketers, half of the people I pulled whose businesses are doing more than a hundred thousand dollars a year. Half of them never mailed their unopened. So this problem was rampant amongst all marketers, all businesses, and it was rampant among the top of marketers. We're literally talking, just look at it on a macro level. Half of them are never mailing their unopens. So if you do what we share today, you're ahead of half the people. I mean, you're literally ahead of half the people. So, of course, I looked back on these numbers. And I was like, well, these guys are idiots. <laughs> now, like, I'm like, it's one of those things. It's like, how can you possibly not be doing this? And then I went back and looked at, you know, I've been doing online marketing for 15 years now. I was like, well, how many, what percentage of emails did I send on opens? Mm, it's about one out of every 20 emails. I would have fallen into that third category. The handful of people who did it occasionally. In other words, I was leaving a lot of traffic and a lot of money on the table. Just an absolute ridiculous amount of money and a lot of traffic and a lot of influence and a lot of impact that I was leaving on the table. So I had to make this mindset shift. Like I always thought about mailing unopens, right? Well, there's a reason why they didn't unopen it, right? What, what if I bother them? What if they, um, what if they get ticked off and they don't, you know, they unsubscribe? Um, this is all up here. There's so much, you guys, I don't know if you've noticed this, we talk so much about mindset because so much of it is just, there's like a mind game that we're playing with ourselves. So I'm thinking, what if they unsubscribe? Like, just insert irrational worry here, right? What if they blank? <laughs> and so I realized that's why I wasn't emailing and open. So regardless of what your, your fears are, what your concerns are, and we have, like, even those of us that now, I, I resend emails all the time. I still think about these things from time to time. Here's the key. I want you to remember this. And Mark, if you could put this up on the screen, put it in the comments, uh, like get it tattooed on your forehead. So you guys see this when you look in the mirror, you are doing your audience a favor by resending your emails to the unopens. You are doing your audience a favor. You're not bothering them. You're not interrupting their life. You're doing them a favor because they may have had every intention of opening your email and, and they just got busy and they didn't get back to it. There's plenty of times I've seen an email from somebody and you know, I'm out and about and I was looking for something. And then I saw an email from somebody and I was like, Oh, that looks like a good email. I'll look at that later. And then life got in the way. 
Maybe they were on vacation. Maybe they were sick. Maybe they, you know, they got just got a lot of emails that day. And they 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 had to go through them. They go now they come back to their emails later. And you know, there's 500 emails waiting for them. And so guess what? Yours just doesn't get read. But you email them 12 days later when you're one of only 14. So if you do what we're about to teach, they won't even realize that it's a recent. So they're not going to be any more or less likely, quite frankly, to unsubscribe to your recent than they would to any other email. Yeah, I see Gwen asking, when did, when did you have your aha moment? For me, Mark, you were on the team at that point. I want to say it was about two years ago, roughly, give or take. Yeah, probably. When we really realized that, it's like, oh my goodness, yeah. And it was one of those things that I went, oh, wow. I, I cannot believe we're not doing this, just how much we're leaving on the table. Because here's the thing, guys, and I, I'm going to share this tool in a little bit. It's going to help you with your content. But the thing is, you put so much into your content. You put so much into your message. You put so much into this email that you wrote. And you, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but it's not easy. It's not easy to create content. It's not easy to write an email. And even if you can flop out a 300 word email in 20 minutes, that's 20 minutes of your life that you just took. And then to only have 10, 15% of the people see it when for another two minutes, you could have another seven to 10% read it. There've been plenty of times we'll share this as we go along where the unopen the, the email to the unopen because we did a little tweak actually performed better than the original email, which is virtually impossible just because of the pool of people that are left unless you do something really well with it. It also allows you, we'll talk about this, how to, sp just to split test your emails with the original send and then mail the winner to the unopens. There are so many cool things that you can do. Um, you know, that just that when, when we realized this, it was just, it was so cool when, when we had that aha moment. And uh, again, we put so much effort into this content creation, just put so much effort into writing the email that you might as well squeeze as much as you can get out of it. Now, Eric asks, what is the percentage who then open it on the resend? Uh, it's about 76.7% uh, of the original unopen rate. That's what we figured out after studying this for a while. So you take whatever the, the original open rate was, let's just say it was 20%. Then we're probably looking at about a 14.4% on the unopens. Unless the open rate initially was really high, then the, the second open rate will be a little bit lower very often. If the initial open rate was really low, the second one actually might be higher, like I was just saying. And so well, it varies, but on average, it's around three quarters of the people that open it the first time will open it the second time. But here's the thing, and we'll talk about this. What about a third time and a fourth time? And now suddenly you've more than doubled. I can't wait to share that in a little bit. Well, that's what I was going to say, Matt. I mean, I think the thing that people realize, because I mean, when you look at the stats, because here's what's going to happen, Matt. Some of these people are, some of you guys on here will try this and you'll send this, this unopened, this email to your unopens and you'll get like a, I don't know, what will seem like a really low open rate. You have to realize those are people that didn't open it at all the first time. Like these are all bonus opens. Yeah. Because if you hadn't sent that recent, re, that recent, none of them would have opened it. None of them would have seen it. I mean, maybe one or two would have found it three weeks later, but these are all, I mean, bonus opens, really. I mean, that's the way I look at them. So regardless of whether it seems like it's lower, I mean, it's adding to your open rate. It's it's just, it's all gravy. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, it's um, yeah, it's going to be 97% of the time you're going to have a lower open rate on the second email because you have to remember that most of us have between five and 7% of our list are hardcore fans that open every email we send or just about, right? So, and they open them within hours. So those people, you don't even have a chance with them on the resend, which is fine. But occasionally, like I said, we'll share this as we go along. Occasionally we stumble upon something or we test out a subject line um, or we tweak something that just happens to resonate with people just on a whim because that's the other thing is with your resends, you, you can get a little crazy. Why not? And we'll get a little crazy. And then, oh man, that subject line got like a huge open rate considering that it was a resend. Now I mentioned this tool I wanted to share with you guys. Um, 
This is a very last second addition to today's plan, but I, I wanted you guys who are on live to be the first to, to hear about this because this is literally blowing my mind. And it ties right in with what we were talking about with um, like content creation because we work so flipping hard to create content. I don't know about you guys, it's hard. It's still to this day, it's easier than it's ever been and it is still hard to create content. So I want you guys to check out this thing that I heard about. I mentioned Ray Edwards told me about it and it's just the coolest thing. We're just now getting started with it. I think we're uh, 48 hours into using it, not even, and I'm blown away by it. I am like, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now, just playing around with it. It's called Repurpose. And Mark's going to drop the link in the chat. It's mattmcwilliams.com forward slash repurpose. Um, it is one of the coolest tools. I'm actually going to pull up. Let me pull up their page here. I just want to read to you some of what it can do because we, we, we haven't even tapped into this yet. <laughs> like we are at like operating at like 10% of what this can do. So here's how we're using it. We're using it to take our podcast episodes and automatically – update them or uh, upload them to YouTube. So now they're YouTube videos and it's got like, you can put a background image and it's got the little wavelength thing that goes like this as you're talking. Uh, you can do the same thing with um, inst you know, publishing stuff to Instagram. Take um, Robbie, what's up, bud? You can take your um, Facebook lives and automatically with an intro and an outro, which is the coolest part, take your Facebook lives and throw them up on YouTube. So Mark's the one who does that process. Typically what that process looks like is you got to download the file, which in Mark's internet takes about a day and a half. I'm kidding. It takes about 10 minutes. Maybe it's a sl it's still a slow process. Long Sometimes enough, say, long enough for us to forget that it was downloading and move on to something else and then never actually upload it. Then you have to add the intro and the outro, export that file from iMovie or final cut, which takes about a half hour, then upload it to YouTube and add all the description and stuff. It's about 30 minutes of work time and a bunch of waiting. It's a process. It's easy to mess up. It's easy to forget. It's easy for it to just get lost, right? Um, Repurpose does all that. So Mark's dropping the link in the chat. I think he already has. Uh, you can automatically transcribe stuff. You can convert Facebook Lives to podcasts. Um, yes, what else does it say? I mean, there's all kinds of stuff that we're probably not even going to use. You, oh, snippets to Twitter and Instagram. This is the coolest thing. It'll take like snippets of your podcast and then publish them to social media and then say, okay, go here for the full episode. Like it's just, and it's happening, no work whatsoever. So I remember when I saw this, when, when Ray mentioned it and then I looked it up, I'm thinking, okay, this is going to cost, like, I remember the number I had in my mind was this is probably going to cost 500 bucks, but if it costs 300, I'm good to go. Like I know it'll make up for what we're spending in time I remember going, if it costs more than 300, I'm going to have to think about it. Like I'm going to have to ask my team, how much are we spending to do this? You know, and then if it's like, for, if, heaven forbid, you know, I mean, I'd be surprised if it was like a hundred bucks, then I'm all over it, you know? And I looked at the pricing and it was $20 a month. I'm like, this already, already saves Mark, you an hour and a half a, month, a week, probably. Yep. yep. So right there, it paid for itself in... The first month it paid for itself for the year. Uh, it saves our virtual assistants time on uploading stuff. It saves me time. I mean, I, I, guys, I was blown away. So go check it out. I mean, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash repurpose. Um, just it's pretty awesome. Check this out because it is like the coolest tool I've seen. Here's what I'm going to say. Uh, yeah, love it, Matt. Put up four podcasts today. Yeah, they have a free trial. It took 10 minutes to do it. And again, you can set it to do it automatically. Like we're going to go back and do all of our past stuff manually so that we drip that out. But then we're going to, um, we're going to just have it do it automatically. So podcast episode goes live. It's up on YouTube. Guys, it's, just, it's amazing. So here's what I'll say. If you guys will get, uh, go check out repurpose. I, I want to push you to get this because it's so cool. And they have a free trial. You don't even have to pay him anything to start off with, okay? So I don't even care about you going to um, pay anything. I'd, I'd love if you would. We make money. It's an affiliate thing, of course. Um, and we just discovered this the other day. Go get the free trial. Show me that you've set it up. Just take a screenshot of one of your workflows. They take 10 minutes to set up tops. Like Matt's, oh, Matt said, yeah, 10 minutes to do it. Tops. 
that's if you design like images and stuff. If you just use their templates, it takes 45 seconds. Um, show me that you've set up a workflow, that you're, you're publishing something to Facebook, publishing something to Twitter. Use their free trial. Don't even pay them anything. Send me a screenshot. Uh, just send it to um, repurpose at mattmcwilliams.com. And we got something cool for you. We're going to share the scripts from the last so you guys can see how we structure our Facebook lives. We structure our Facebook lives in a way that it's convenient for people who are going to view it in the future or on other mediums. So you'll see how we do the scripts. You'll see how we outline them and, and how we do those. We're going to share the last five of those with you. So send a screenshot that you've set something up, your workflow, you know, some sort of a connection, you figure it out and, and we'll send you um, those Facebook live templates. So that's repurposed for you guys. I mean, again, I just discovered it and I wanted you guys to be the first to, um, you know, to see what, what it does it is just flipping awesome. It doesn't do anything for written content, although you can transcribe stuff. So you can take those podcasts and those videos and have them transcribed, which you can turn into written content. And that's what repurposing is, guys. We take, you know, this doesn't do all the repurposing you could ever do, but ultimately we go video, podcast, written, uh, social, you know, and so on and so forth, email down the line. And this does a lot of the work for it. I would say it probably will do roughly 25 to 30% of the work for you, which is huge, regardless of whether you've got a team or you don't. All right, so let's talk about those nuts and bolts of, of, of doing the resends. Now, it's a pretty straightforward process, okay? Now, there are a million different email systems, you know, just a, a million out there. Um, there's MailChimp, you know, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash MailChimp. Uh, there's ConvertKit, which you can get a 30-day free trial of through us, by the way, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash ConvertKit. I don't know why I start singing URLs all of a sudden. Um, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash repurpose. Um <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Mark just shakes his head like, what the heck is happening? Um, it doesn't matter what you use. It's most of them make it pretty easy to send emails to segments. Okay. And that segment is based on whether they opened a previous email or not. So you have this email about topic A and you can create a segment that says, send it to all these people. I know with ConvertKit, it's as easy as clicking a single button. You literally just go bloop and it sends it. Now, what we like to do is schedule those so that we don't forget because they're going bloop, you know, that's something that you have to remember to do later. And I mean, I guess you can schedule that one too, but still yep. we like to just go ahead and do it right as we're doing it. And we work it into the content calendar and we schedule those on opens. Um, so it's easy, but there's some things that you have to do uh, to get it right. So I'm going to speak generally, you know, these are not, um, these aren't really applicable necessarily just to MailChimp or just to ConvertKit. These are just general uh, techniques. Please, I would just request, like, don't ask me how to use this, how to do it in a specific thing, because then we'll be here all day answering, like, and I don't know. I know how to do it in ConvertKit and MailChimp. So um, both of those are super easy. You can do this with anything, though. All right, you can do this if you're using yet another mail merge. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash Y-A-M-M. See how we've got links for all these? Um, I don't even make anything if you use that one, but we just made it easy <laughs> instead of, it's like yet dash another dash mail dash merge dash is dash awesome dot info, you know? Um, I think it's the URL, but there are like 18 dashes in their URL. Yeah. Um, yet another mail merge. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash Y-A-M-M. And you can actually mail merge people. Like if you're recruiting affiliates or you're just sending out an email like, I know I'm going to send out one soon. Like, hey, are you going to be at PLF Live? And we're going to send that out. And I don't really feel like sending that out through MailChimp. I'm sending it out to contacts. But quite frankly, I don't feel like copying and pasting the same email 50 to 100 times. And so I can mail that out again in a certain number of days. I can, I can actually hit unopens that way. Ultimately, when we're talking about affiliate promotions, I would fit these into your promotional plan. I've got a podcast episode that just went live, I think, yesterday talking about promo plans and uh, just to drop another URL because we've only dropped like six so far in this, in this live mammocwames.com forward slash promo plan. And you can go get our promo plan for launches when you're promoting affiliate offers, work this in, work your unopens in and you'll see how, how you do that. You'll see actually 
I saw Gwen's comment. It sounds like a Catholic chanting at communion. That's funny. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So here's how you do it. These are five techniques that we use uh, to do this consistently. Number one, change the type of subject line that you use. I'm not just talking about uh, this, this one in here is not a must do. The next one I'm going to share with you is a virtually a must do. I would say it's like if you want to, if you actually want it to work. So change the type of subject line that you use. Now, what I mean by that is if your first email um, was a statement, maybe it was a how to, you know, how to almost double your email open rate overnight. Change the type to a question. Do you want to double your email rate the easy way or email open rate the easy way? The email is the same thing. It's just, you know, different things. Uh, if you try, if you use curiosity at first, then try the benefits second. Yeah, you know, the idea is just to catch the eye of someone who they might not have been intrigued by the last subject line, but they'll be intrigued by this one. I, mean, I can tell you it works. So the idea here is to just think of ways to catch different set of eyeballs because you've got people in your audience. Let's just say on a micro level, you've got three types of people in your audience. You got people who like how to people who like uh, curiosity, you know, they'll open curiosity emails and then people who open questions. Well, how can you address all three in one email? Now, over time, you know, certainly you could use uh, AI to learn what they're going to react to and, and, and meet those but it might just be that they only react to certain types of things. And so with your unopens, you hit those three things and you'll get basically everybody to open it in theory. It's not true, but you get the idea. You'll get those three groups. So number one is change the type of subject line you use. Number two, this is a must do. Change at least one character in each paragraph. Now this is something that we learned from Jeff Walker. I think it was at LaunchCon 2017. And I wasn't there, but Mark was. And he came back and he told me this yeah. months after we started doing unopens. And he said this and I went, oh, that makes total sense. Because here's what, what happens. If, if you've ever looked at replies you've received from emails, uh, Gmail abbreviates the information you've already seen with the three dots. Okay. So it'll have the little three dots and it, you, have to, uh, you have to click on that to get it to drop down, but it's not shown immediately. So if you send the exact same email, the exact same paragraph, it basically threads it. It threads it. It could end up in who knows where. Um, and it could, it kind of like drops it down and doesn't really show the information. So in other words, it's not a very good email. So what you do is you change one character in each paragraph. That way the entire email is sent. A new subject line, one character, and it doesn't get threaded. And so there's a couple of simple ways you can do this. One, um, you know, change a colon to a dash. That's an easy way. Um, if there was a dot, 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 you know, an ellipse, change it to a comma or a dash. Um, you could just literally tweak a word. You could take a, you could take you are and make it your, you can make your, you are, uh, you could change, you know, if you really struggle, just literally like look up, look up a word on thesaurus.com and, you know, just pick a new word. Um, I would say, you know, this amazing book from Ray Edwards, by the way, which you can win today. Talk about a segue. That was awesome. Ooh, wow. Complimenting my own segues. I did not believe that. Um, Yeah, you can win this book, by the way, How to Write Copy That Sells. This amazing book from Ray Edwards. Uh, leave a comment, share what we're doing today, and you'll be entered to win. What I meant by that was this amazing book or this awesome book or this extraordinary book. They all mean the same thing, and it takes two seconds to change a word, right? So change one character. A lot of times, Mark, when we're really struggling, we just add a fourth dot to an ellipse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done that. <laughs> or I mean, because well, because sometimes you know you'll have a line that you wrote in an email, or I wrote in the email, that's like, it really is. Period, or really is dot dot dot. So I'm like, how am I going to change that? So I just put dot 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 dot. Yeah. <laughs> or and then dot dot dot. Right. What exactly. the heck am I supposed to do? And then what happened was, you know, no, we just write and then dot 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 you know change one character uh you'll get it read okay right, tip number three this goes back to the subject line try what we call a re-reply now mark if you can put what we mean by re-reply in the, uh, up on screen so people can just get a visual for it in case you don't know uh 
just as I know, this one only works if you use it occasionally. Okay, if you use this a lot, it will lose its effect in a heartbeat. A re-reply is simple. You put the re colon in front of the subject line. Okay, right? so if you have a really good subject line, what I mean by that is, let's just say that your normal open rate is fourteen percent, and you have a subject line that gets a nineteen percent open rate. Well, you might not want to change that. You might not. So you just want to use a re-reply. And then what you do in that email is just like you would with a friend. You put a, an RE in front of an RE colon, the original subject line. You still have to change a character though. But then at the top, you just put, hey, just making sure you saw this. Just making sure, did you see this? That's it. Again, it works really well if you do it every now and again, because if you're resending this email, it must be important, right? It must be important. So you do this. Um, I typically do this when we're doing resends within 72 hours. That's a good time to do it. Like, hey, there's a webinar coming up with so-and-so and hey, just want to make sure you saw this. So I would say probably one out of every 20 is about, maybe one out of 10 is about the limit that you can do yeah. this. Again, if you do this so often, people just get, in, then they do get annoyed. But if you do it on occasion, they're going to love you for it. Because again, you're doing your audience a favor by doing this. All right. Tip number four is send the email at an odd time. Um, now, it may not be an odd time like in the literal sense, like 345 in the morning is a very odd time to send an email. You know, that's kind of weird. What I mean by this is that it's unusual for you. So if you normally send emails on Mondays, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, at 7 a.m. Eastern, try to send an email on a Tuesday at 3 p.m. or send one on a Thursday night or even a Monday, Wednesday, Friday night, send one over the weekend. You know, uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but just send it uh, at an unusual time. The idea of this one is you introduce a pattern disrupt. And so um, what I mean by this is like, we'll, we, you're just disrupting the, you know, so-and-so always emails at this time. And so what happens is like, I have a friend of mine who does this. I won't mention Ray Edwards' name. Um, by the way, how to write comments. Nice, uh, leave a comment, share it, get for in the free book. Um, I won't mention Raider's name, but at least twice in the past six months, now he's a friend. So it's a little bit different. I got an email from him and it came at such an unusual time. And with combination of the subject line that I was like, Oh, I'm going to open. Like I had to open that because I just assumed it was a personal email from him. I got one the other day that I literally went, the, the subject line actually had me worried because it was, I, I'll just say what it was. It was like, we need to set up a call. We need to set up a call ASAP. And I'm like, man, did I do something wrong? Like, what the <laughs> heck? You know, because Ray's a friend, but he's also a client. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I opened the email and it was an email for his copywriting certification. I'm like, and I took a screenshot and texted him. I said, dang it, Ray. <laughs> thanks for the, you know, thanks for the heart attack that you gave me here. But, but and part of that was because it was sent at like seven o'clock at night. It's not a normal time frame. So you're not trying to trick your audience. You're just trying to get them to notice something they might normally miss because it's out of the ordinary, you know, or because it, yeah, I mean, I guess you're, they might normally miss it. In this case, it's out of the ordinary. So they get to, they actually notice it. And then fifth, I just touched on it. Send the resend on the weekend. We don't normally send uh, on the weekend. And so this, this really ties in with that pattern disrupt. We have found, I did a whole podcast episode on this. Or was it a video? I forget, to be honest with you. It was a piece of content that's probably been repurposed five times. <laughs> and it'll now be on now YouTube you, using repurpose.io. Using repurpose.com <laughs> forward slash repurpose. So you guys can do that as well. All right. So. I don't know. I have no idea if it was a video or a podcast at this point. Because what's probably all of them. about this? I've actually gotten away from uh, most podcast episodes now are original to the podcast. Probably seven out of ten. I still record some videos and then strip the audio. But actually, how I'm recording podcasts right now is on my walks with uh, uh, my iPhone and uh, a windscreen. Oh, in fact, oh, I don't have the windscreen down here. Uh, I'll just show you. That's my setup. As I just walk and talk into the phone. I recorded a podcast episode this other day at a gas station in Tennessee or we in Kentucky. I don't remember. We were close to the Tennessee, Kentucky border. 
I was at a gas station. I recorded a podcast and you can hear like the, you know, trucks going by and stuff like that. I recorded a podcast, go live here in the next week or so on a hike. And so what you hear is me talking and then of the leaves and you hear like the stream bubbling next to me. Um, you also hear me going, hang on. Is this is this gonna be an is this gonna be a new podcast like affiliate marketing on your walk or something like that? No, it, just, it came to me. I don't know. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. Uh, but I'm doing that now. Most of the time, it sounds just as good as if I'm using a fancy our fancy setup. There's just occasionally some background noise, and occasionally um, I'm out of breath. You know, as I'm climbing to the top of Walker Mountain. Oh, actually, no. I recorded that one when I came down. I was on I was on the way down from the mountain when I recorded that, and so. Which is funny, side note, Jeff Walker and I both, we, we climbed to walk, the top of Walker Mountain on the same day. We took the exact same picture. It was a, there's this little opening about this wide, and if you, don't, if you don't turn, you'll miss it. And it opens up to look over the property at Blackberry Farm. And uh, it was just really, really cool. You know, like we took the exact same picture. And so, um, all right, so emailing on the weekends. What I'm talking about here is just, again, it's a pattern disrupt, but here's the thing. A lot of people aren't working or at work, you know, on the weekend. So they have more time to look at their emails. Yeah. I personally, I don't, I don't read my emails very often on Sunday nights, but that's a lot of time. A lot of times that's pe when people get back online Sunday, about 7 PM local time works really well. And you can do that with most programs where you send it based on their time zone. And again, it's a pattern disrupt. So number five was send the email on the weekend. So I see a question from Gwen. Have you had people write to you say they noticed you repeating a lot on all of the different platforms? If so, do you have a response? Nope, never. I've literally never had anybody say that. Part of it is, you know, Stu, Stu McLaren and I uh, were, were chatting on Facebook yesterday. He was doing a live and, and I was like firing comments at him and I, I made the comment, Gwen, I know we've mentioned this to you in, uh, in start, how, you know, people don't remember what you sent last week, let alone last year. And so how we would do that, if we did go video to podcast to written, okay. And possibly inserting a Facebook post in there as well is the video would come out today. The pot or the podcast would come out today. The video we'd pump out anywhere from six months to a year later. And then the written version would come out another six months to a year after that. It's a two year span. The other thing is with the, the written, especially like the podcast and the video are exactly the same. If I do record a video that becomes a podcast, the only difference is I'm going to put graphics up on screen. Yeah. You know, that's about the only difference. And the intro and the outro are different. When we write it, we might take that video and combine it with another video and then write that as one big epic piece of content because we don't want a like one five minute video produces what Mark, a thousand word blog post. It's probably not going to rank very well. Maybe. Yeah. And we're looking for rankings with our content as much as possible SEO. So we'll take that video and combine it with this video and part of this podcast. Now we have a 3,700 word epic post. Well, and I, I'd say even, even everything. if we, even if we don't do that, Matt, I, I would almost say that the written version is completely different content. Um, one, because we typically write it six to eight months later. Uh, we go back and look at that video and I write it yeah. from that video. But that means there's different links. There's different things that we've written in between or shared in between. And so we're referencing different things. Um, you know, I'm typically writing that post, whereas Matt did the video, which means that I think of saying things a different way or we add a different example that Matt might have thought might not have thought of. So really... I mean, the written content's completely different, but then a lot of times we do. A lot of times Matt will be like, hey, I was thinking we, we combined, you know, this podcast episode, but then take this piece from this video and you put those together and now it's yep. definitely a different piece of content. So, but yeah, I've never, I've never had it. You make a good point that. with it being, you know, sometimes a year and a half, two years later. Yeah, we're linking the different we're stuff. We're able to or... add, we're able to add a, a, a seventh reason. You yeah. know, we had five reasons before, now we have seven. We had nine you know tips before now we have a tenth and and it's so it really is very different content well and i mean and, um and as you guys know my written voice and my spoken voice are very different 
in the sense of we clean it up. Yeah. You know, I don't, um, that <laughs> we don't put, you know, I don't, um, in the written version. And so a lot of times with video, especially live video, you're getting my, you're, you're seeing my brain process what you're asking and coming up with an example live. And you're getting right. my thought process on something as opposed to getting my completed thought in the, in the written version. Well, and the final thing I'll say on that, Matt, is the fact that, um, you know, even I, I've seen places where I'm on Twitter for a second, then I'm on Facebook and I see somebody post something similar. I'm never like, geez, what the heck? Seriously? Why in the heck are you sharing this twice? I'm so annoyed. I'm never annoyed by it. I'm just like, oh yeah, they're sharing it on different platforms. And most of the people that see your content are going to think of it the same way. They're going to say, oh, yep, I already, I read that post or I saw that video yeah. rather than being offended because you, you somehow, um, you know, shared it in two different places. <laughs> you were trying to highlight a comment and talk at the same time just now and it did not go well <laughs> it did not no well phil um, phil posted a comment right before i went to hit send yeah, it right after yeah and now, now uh, Glenn's comment you can't see me i oh, love that i mean you, you know here's the thing Gwen, about repurposing um it, it starts from your first piece of content like don't think that this is something yeah. you have to do once you have 100 pieces you know you start planning on it now the biggest mistake i made when i first started was everything was written or everything was video or everything was podcast. And, and instead now I go into it immediately going, okay, how can I, how can I look at this from a perspective of how much content can I create out of this? And so that my mind is in there. So start now, start now with that, with that thought. Um, I will say guys, yeah, I uh, Gwen, let, let's uh, let's answer Gwen's question. Do you ever actually put out a blog that openly says, "Hey, based on some questions that I've been coming up, I decided to republish." Oh, we do that all the time. Uh, mm -hmm. We even take old written stuff and go in and update it with a seventh thing or a fifth thing, or a, um, or a new you know study, a new thought, new and then re-release that, and it and it works it works really well because it's up it's an updated version. The reality is, at any point in time somewhere between one third and 90% of your audience wasn't on your list when the, when this piece of content came out, you know, statistically speaking, half of our list wasn't on half of my list was not in my audience one year ago today. So anything older than a year, we update it. You as somebody who's been on for a while, you still get, you know, some, Oh, Oh, there's a new thing. And, uh, oh, that's a great reminder on number three. I forgot about that. I remember reading this a year and a half ago. No, you don't. No, but you do. You met, And then you go, oh, that's right. That was a good reminder. Plus this new thing. And then the old people are like, oh, this is great. So you can even well, do that. And, and here's a great example, Matt. I'm going to drop it in the comments here. But While you're talking, I'm going to go grab my charger. Okay. <laughs> Sounds my, good. My, Did I you forget your charger back. again? What? Isn't this like two weeks in a row? Didn't yeah, you do this like two weeks ago? No. So, you know, Matt mentioned that we, we sometimes will update content and I'm going to drop in the, the comment or in the a link here in a second, but we did that with uh, one that Matt wrote about affiliate bonuses. And what we did is essentially we said, you know, uh, updated, you know, I can't remember exactly what we used for the subject line, but um, essentially it was like updated information. And we changed them because we'd found new information. We'd found that, you know, something that we had said actually doesn't work. Okay. There it is right there. It just popped up new research. And it was essentially, we had more data to back up what we were talking about. And then we had, you know, I think Matt, one of the other things, if I remember right, that we um, changed was we used to say, make the bonus package between 50% and like 250%. And I think we changed that to like 200 because Matt's like, yeah, that's a little Everything bit higher than we really want great. to be. Everything you just yeah, said was awesome. Exactly. Yeah. See, um, um, and you guys can all tell Matt that I just said that I, you know, need to. I need a raise and um, I want a allowance for a car. And no, Matt, we were just talking about, I was just talking about that affiliate bonus one we did and how we use the new research um, angle because there were some things we found out. We found out that the, you know, the amount of the bonus package, the percentage of the product had changed. Yeah. And so we added some of that. And so, yeah, I mean, we do that kind of stuff all the time where we will update stuff, whether it's a new study or we did a new test and we say, oh, well, we actually found that this works better. So, I mean, why, why, why reinvent the wheel <laughs> when you've already written the post, just update it and share it again. Just like you said, Matt, I mean, people, a lot of people didn't see it the first time. So 
Exactly. So how about this? Uh, Tanya had a question about written content here. Yeah, yeah. real quick. Uh, yeah, let's answer that question. I just want, we'll, yeah. we'll wrap up here. What is wrong with content being 400, uh, 400 to 600 word content versus a thousand plus? Uh, it just comes down to uh, reach. You know, written content these days, uh, and this is this has evolved in the last 15 years. Uh, honestly, let's look at trip back in the, in the time machine to 10 years ago. 400 to 600 word blog posts were very popular five to 10 years ago. There are some are authors, Arthurs or Arthurs. They could be named Arthur. <laughs> there are some authors. There's one in particular whose name I cannot think of. Uh, but I know Jim Boston is a big fan of him. Is it uh, Seth? Sean. Sean of the South. Sean, Sean of the South. Sean of the South. Yes. I just started following him. He is hilarious. That's actually the one I was telling you about the other day on the last Facebook Live, by the way. Now, Sean of the South, for example, it's a very... He's not really trying to attract new readers through SEO. Like his, you know, that's just not how he's going to attract new readers. It's a dying art form to have four to 500, 600 word, you know, blog posts. They, they aren't going to rank typically in search because um, all, be, all things being equal, Google prefers longer content. All things not being equal, Google prefers longer content. They equate it with value, right? Yeah, it is. And there's that um, because what people are looking for when they want the five minute version is they want a video, they want an audio. They don't want to read for five minutes. Uh, now that may work for your audience. It's just, it doesn't work for our audience. So uh, we don't do it. You know, it's just, it's not, it's, it's a lot of effort to create a 600 word blog post as opposed to a five minute video that gets the same message across. It's 10 times more work yeah. to create it at our level to have no reach beyond the initial impact of you reading it. So I'd rather create the five minute video and then to combine that with something else and something else, and then create a four or 5,000 word Epic blog post that shows up number one on Google. For instance, you know, you can go look up, uh, I'll just think about it, holiday affiliate uh, promotions. And you go look up holiday affiliate promotions. We have the number one listing because we have the ultimate guide to holiday affiliate marketing promotions, which is, a, you know, an epic blog post, right? Uh, what's the one, you know, monetizing small email lists. I, mean, I honestly haven't looked this up myself. Uh, we're number two. We're not number one, but, we just, you know, we <sighs> just put that up. Um, the same is true for just about anything. Longer is going to do better. And so well, we're then- going to bring in new people that way. And I, I would say Matt too, and, and Tanya, I would, I would be curious to see what you think about this. But for me, when I'm writing a blog post, 60 to 70% of the effort is those first four to 500 words. And the last 2000 is like 30% of the effort, because at that point I'm flushing yeah. out ideas. I'm, I'm adding examples. I'm putting in some example email copy, you know, for our stuff. So for me, you know, typically I'll build out the post and then I'll go back and be like, okay, how can I explain this more? How can I add to this thought? How can I give an example? So to take it from, I mean, for me, honestly, now Matt, it's to write a thousand word blog post is nothing. Like it really isn't hard. Mm -hmm. And then it's, you know, then I sit back and think, okay, what, what other examples can I give? What other, what ways can I help my audience to understand this concept better? And that's where I add examples and I add images and I do all these things that increase the length of it and help the SEO, um, but really don't add that much time to what it takes to write the blog post. Yeah. And, and Mark, you made a good point. I mean, we, the majority of the time is spent on the first, is spent on the title. It's spent on the introductory paragraph. And it's outlining spent- the bullet points or the the tips or the strategy. And then I was going to say it's, it's those two things in terms of the writing, everything else is cake. Mm-hmm. Then every, the other stuff that you have to do, whether it's 600 words or, you know, 6,000 words. Yeah. It takes longer to format a 6,000 word one, but it's not astronomical because it's formatting it. It's yeah. Proofreading. Yeah. You know, we, we were getting ready to add another layer of proofreading to our, to our queue. And so that it's just that much less likely that there's typos. If you go back and read some of our content from three years ago, oh my gosh, we went back and reread it and we're like, 
oh god like, how did we push that live with that sentence it is terrible <laughs> um but you know it, it is what it is uh the images you know that we put in the in the blog posts and all that stuff all that stuff just takes time and so if we're going to do a post it better not be a one-hit wonder we I, I will only we will only release written content if i believe it can bring in a large number of visitors through search engine optimization through seo for me that's that's our mo otherwise for connecting with my audience and just ongoing content um it's going to be you know it's going to be video and audio and yeah to answer your question phil uh yeah we we don't i don't worry about keyword research I don't worry about it all it doesn't keep me up at night but we do it <laughs> and so yes if, if i'm going to spend um let, let's just say collectively between me and our team if i'm going to spend seven hours 10 hours and a hundred plus dollars creating a piece of written content. It better be for some keywords that people actually search for. Like, I mean, it better be something it's, you don't, doesn't that make sense though? Here's what keyword research is telling you. What's on people's minds. What do they care about? You know, in, in politics, we call that polling. So you would never see a politician come out and talk about, his top three issues are things that nobody gives a flip about. I'm not suggesting he poll and find out whether he should be on side A or side B. That, in my opinion, is unethical. But I do suggest that he talks about issues that are actually on people's minds. And maybe if there's an issue where he is in the minority, he shuts up about it. That's being wise. And, and so we talk about the things that are on people's minds. If we talk about things that are on people, how do we find out what's on people's mind? What are they searching for? What are they searching for in Google? So yeah, that's what key, that's all keyword researchers. People make this big thing about it. It's some like dark art. No, it's what are people talking about? You know, what are people, what are people, um, you want to show up in search results, go write a 10,000 word, uh, blog post on a reputable site about the uh, what is it? Mueller investigation. You'll show, you'll, you'll get some traffic. Because that's what people are talking about right now. I, I'm not talking about it other than just to say this, but because I don't give a flying crap. But some people, millions of people are talking about it. You know, and so, yeah, that's what keyword research is. What are people searching for? Um, hey, JC. All right. So um, would you consider posting a list of how to hire a VA and the sources you trust? to? Help? Ah, Gwen. Um, you know what? Since we're opening it up soon, uh, Mark, I may be about ready to give you a panic attack. Um, <laughs> I, I prepared for it. I, I felt it coming. Okay. Do Go we ahead. have a URL for our Start Mastermind? We do, but it's not set up yet. <laughs> okay. So then email me. When here's where I'm going with this. We're getting ready to do a presentation here in the next 45 days or so about this topic, about hiring uh, VAs and all that. It's exclusively for our Start Mastermind. Uh, peeps though, which Gwen you're in. So you're going to get the training. Yay. Gwen. Uh, we Yay. are opening up enrollment, uh, or registration, whatever you want to call it for our next start group. The way to get more information on that is email me start at matt .com, And we'll get you on the waiting list. Cause it's not even open yet. We haven't even, the, the page doesn't even create like the URL that I was going to give you guys doesn't even work. So email me matt or start at matt .com, and we'll make sure to get you uh, information on that on that start mastermind, um, because yeah, it's an it's a lengthy that's a that's an hour that's an hour long training, you know, in and of itself. All right, so I had to uh, laugh when I saw her post that about uh you know what she does to have you know what you do to help manage the repurposing. I'm like, is it just gonna point at me? <laughs> what do we do to manage the repurposing? Oh, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I, I'm involved. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, I've, I'm delegating more. That's something I've been working on, uh, but yeah, I'm still involved, you know, in, in that. For example, I'll tell you what, let me just give you the real quick process. And then, yes, my laptop's charging. Good. I'm up to 8%. Ooh. I was down to 2%, by the way, when I went to grab my charger. I was like, I wasn't sure if- That's like, please interrupt me, Mark. When please I interrupt. came over here, 
if it was going to be still on. Like I was just waiting for it to be like mid word and you just cut out. Um, as long as I was still here. It'd be yeah. Good. I need to just go, I need to just get another charger and bring it over here. And for the, for this, I only have one charger for two laptops. Um, which is just dumb. All right. So where are we going with that? Okay. So the process is typically this, I'll have an idea for a piece of content and I'll go record the video. And then I'll talk to Mark and we'll, you know, we'll decide how we're going to kind of release that. And then I'll strip that. Typically the audio we will strip that and release it as a podcast episode. And then we'll go ahead and put it on the schedule, you know, sometime down the road that it's going to be content. We'll get that video produced and make it pretty and all that, you know, fun stuff. And, um, that'll become the video. And then at some point we'll decide to create written content out of that and what will typically happen is mark and i will discuss that for a moment is there anything we want to add are there any other idea could we combine it with this you know okay this video is called you know i'm making this up but like five ways to uh be more creative with your email copy Again, just made that up not a great we never knew never do a video on that uh five ways to make your affiliate program fun that's been a a video well, I've got two more ways. So then I might go record an audio track of just me talking through those other two ways or Mark and I will just discuss it and he'll write it out and that'll become the written, the written content. Well, now we can wrap back around. We haven't actually gotten to this point yet in our content journey. We can wrap back around and produce that, take that blog post and record it as a video because now we have two more you know, things to share. And it becomes a whole new video five years later, you know, three years later, whatever the, the time may be. So it's like, whoa, you know, you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. Um, yeah, thank you for the compliment. Uh, oh, that's awesome, Phil. Love to hear that. Uh, yeah, we've had some really huge success stories in, in our Start Mastermind. Just in, I mean, we're, we're three months in. We've had some massive success stories, which is just so much fun. So, Mark, I want to announce a winner. Now, while, while you're picking a comment or somebody who shared to win Ray's book. Uh, I just want to share a couple things with you real quick. If you're going to do this and you should be mailing to your unopens, make sure you track it. Make sure you track the results. Track the open rates, track the uh, the click-through rates, track all that stuff. Uh, see how it's working, right? We mentioned earlier, remember, these people did not open the first email. So by definition, these are uh, you should not expect the same type of open rates. But it takes you a moment to send to unopens. And every open, you get an extra 10 opens, 500 opens, 5,000 opens, whatever. It's, it's one more than you would have had if you had not sent the resend. Okay, that's the key. So if you're doing an affiliate promotion, it could be the difference between getting a sale or not getting a sale. And, you know, I know which one I would choose at least. So here's my challenge to you. Here is my challenge to you. Find an email that you sent in the last two to four weeks and resend it today. Then track your results. So whatever size list you have, we want to start doing these things even when we're small. Let me just use an example. You got 100 people on your list and you sent an email two weeks ago and you got 20 opens. Resend it today. Unless you sent another email today and then don't, you know, maybe do it tomorrow, but schedule it today. Schedule it today and look at a week later. I got another 12 opens. All right. You just increased your open rate from 20 to 32%. That is not a 12% increase, by the way. That is a 60% increase. If you do the math on that, it's a massive, massive increase. So you're going to do it today, whether you're sending it today or scheduling it for tomorrow or the next day. Today, you're going to pick an email from the last two to four weeks. You're going to send it to Unopens. And then you're going to put it into your content calendar and track that. You're going to constantly send to Unopens. If you've got automation, you've got a, an automation sequence, send those to your Unopens. Mark, we have like, I think we send them like 10 times to Unopens. Yeah. And there, like, there's a subject line. That's for our 10th unopened mail. I've actually never gotten a reply to it. It's sent to so few people <laughs> that I've never gotten a reply to it, but I've gotten a lot of replies. I got one the other day, subject line I didn't recognize. 
and Mark, I had to go, I had to look it up in, in MailChimp. It's the, uh, it's our welcome, initial welcome email, the seventh resend. So the eighth time it's sent. I didn't even recognize the subject line. That's how down the line it was. And so few people see it, you know? Yeah. So, so simple. Uh, yeah. To answer your question, Matt, we talked about subject line. Uh, maybe, probably not. Probably not. Uh, all right. So real quick, guys, check out. I, I just saw Matt speaking to Matt Crump. Matt Crump just email me. He's in repurpose. Guys, go Ooh. check that out. If you get that done today, if you sign up today for repurpose, uh, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash repurpose. Uh, this is our new favorite tool. I've I Right now we're doing three of the like 20 things that it does and I'm already in love with it. I mean, I just created the account. I created the free trial account yesterday afternoon. I paid last night. So I'm 24 hours into using it and I'm just in love with it. So uh, Matt emailed me already and he's going to get that. Uh, He's going to get that, um, uh, the, the five templates that we're going to send out from the Facebook lives. Mark will put that together and, and we'll get that out later today. And you guys can just see how we do Facebook lives, kind of what I'm seeing on my screen in the flow and how we turn that into uh, really good long-term content. Um, yeah. I, by the way, I don't know if I said it over, but hi, JC. It's good to see you. Uh, I'll, I'll address your thing in just a second as we wrap up. So go check that out. MattMcWilliams.com forward slash repurpose. Uh, get in there today. Just set up a workflow today. You don't even have to pay them anything today. I just want to see you taking action. That's what we care about, right? Um, get in there and take some action. Guys, I'm, I am so in love with this tool. And I mean this sincerely. This is not a marketing ploy. Uh, Honey's the guy behind it. If he, like, I mean this seriously. Get it now while the price is so flipping low. Because if I, if I were him, I would have already, already realized that's what he price. did. Yeah. I mean, I'm not like, I'm going to look it up and make sure he hasn't. I mean, like dead serious because there's so many people. There's so many people like, I mean, we're talking about this in the community. So pricing. Yeah. Guys, it's still 20 bucks a month for the content marketer. If five podcast feeds, you uh, Facebook lives, full length audios, all this stuff that you can do with the, the don't get the, the, the $12 version. I'm telling you it's worth the eight bucks a month. If you pay in full like we did, it's only like 16 and change a year. Oh my gosh, it is so flipping good. I'm telling you the price has to go up. He's in, honey, you're an idiot if you don't raise your prices <laughs> in the next week. I, wa I want you guys to get the good price. I'm just saying, you're, it, it, it's like idiotic not to raise your prices because it's worth, I'm just going to put it out there. I would have paid 15 times more without blinking. Um, even back in the day when I had like no money, I would have paid four times more without blinking. A hundred bucks, I might have blinked it. I would have had to have thought about it for a while and probably sweat. But I would have been like, wait a minute, I'm spending 10 hours to do this stuff or I'm going to pay him, you know, 80 bucks. Uh, yeah. That's a no-brainer, you know. Um, all right, so real quick, when, what you do, go sign up, mattmcclaims.com forward slash repurpose. Set up a workflow. There's some documentation. I'm not going to go through all that because for one, I can't share my screen. Um, Mark can share his screen, but then it's really tiny and it doesn't look good and all that. Yeah. Set up a workflow, take a screenshot. All I want to do is just see that you took some action. I don't care if it's the paid version, the trial version or whatever. Set up the workflow and then send it to me, you know, repurpose at mattmcwilliams.com and we'll later today or tomorrow, at some point we'll send you those, those templates. Can I, can uh, I add something to that too, Matt? Yeah. I know you said you wanted to make this super easy for me, which I appreciate, but this is not going to take that much more time. I'm going to record a quick video and I'm just going to show them what I'm doing on the back end when we're doing these Facebook lives so they oh, can cool. see how I'm moving it. It'll be a quick two minute video. It's not really that big of a deal, but um, you'll see what the flow is. And I'll kind of walk through that and explain what I'm doing as Matt's going through things and how I just kind of smirk sometimes when he does certain things, because it's actually a lot of work. <laughs> Like, hey, put these stats on the, you should see me, Matt, when you tell me to put stats on the screen, I'm like frantically going back and forth between the doc and us. Oh, I see it. And like copying and then moving it over, pasting you know, it, I showing it on the screen. Highlighting stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now my favorite part, for those of you who don't know, he's got, we've got the bullet points and the talking points up on the screen. Sometimes like literally scripts. And I, you guys will notice I never talk off the script. I mean, on the script. I never read the script. I just use it as a guide. But I can see sometimes I can I know when he gets busy because he'll highlight stuff to delete it and then like two <laughs> minutes will go by 
and he hasn't deleted it. And I'm at the bottom and I'm like, I need you to move this now. Or I have to be like, wait. <laughs> and then I'll move down, but he can't see that I've moved down. Then he deletes it. Now my text is up above and it's so hysterical. Um, well, you know, you guys would never know that, of course. So JC, to, uh, you said something really cool. Uh, MailChimp used to notify me to resend to unopened. Somehow it stopped doing so. For, oh, yeah. I, I didn't know they even notified you. But uh, I've, not, I've never got a notification. Apparently they like JC more than like us. Um, yeah. I mean, the thing, the JC, the thing is put it on your calendar. Put it in your content calendar Yep. to, um, you know, plan out your content, plan out when you're going to, you know, to send to those unopened. So, all right. We never did announce the winner. I meant to a moment ago, uh, Mark, while, we, while I was doing the house, cle- house cleaping, house cleaping, house cleaning, it's like a combination of cleaning and keeping house and clipping. House cleaping. <laughs> house clapping. All right. So clapping? you said the best comment, right? Best comment of the day. Okay. So the winner is Phil. No, I'm just kidding. Although Phil did say that he liked my advice, which I really appreciated. So, uh, sorry, Phil, you're not going to win again. You've already got this book. Too bad. Um, Gwyn. Gwyn had some really good comments and questions and stuff today. So I am picking Gwyn. Nice. Well, Gwyn, I don't think we need your address, but send it to Mark anyway, just in case. Um, <laughs> I know we know your phone number because we called you and wished you a happy birthday. Happy but birthday. I don't, I can't say for sure that we have her address. We do, but I mean, she may have moved. So okay. send us the new yeah. one just in case. She hasn't moved. She She's in the same place. She has been in all of our start calls. Long Beach. So to turn that back to start. Yeah, I just saw uh, awesome Carl. Carl Michael Gurley reached out about Start Mastermind. So really cool. We're going to be opening up that for the next class. We only 12 spots available. So I know where they're going to go like that. Um, we've already got several people that have said they're interested too. So. Yeah, I mean, we've got people ready to go. Uh, do you, need, do you need to tell fast. people what the qualifications for that are or no? Are you going to worry about that right now? We'll, we'll, we'll share them. But, okay. um, right. you know, generally speaking, we actually kind of have um, reverse qualifications in the sense of a lot of times with masterminds, you have to have reached a certain level. And we actually want it the other way for start. We're going to start another mastermind in the future, more intermediate and advanced people. Right now, we're really focused on a more beginner online marketers. So, you know, it's one of those things like we tell people, if you're running a six figure business, you're not a good candidate for start right now. That's okay. Nothing wrong with you. Congratulations. You're just not a good candidate for start. Uh, but yeah, we'll open up enrollment here in the next uh, little bit. And uh, when we do, make sure to look for that and get signed up, schedule a call with us right away. Because like I said, we only have 12 spots. We keep this group very intimate. Um, you guys are going to be best friends. One of my favorite things is we have our one hour mastermind meeting every week with three hot seats and it's action packed and so much fun. But there's, uh, I looked at it the other day, over the past couple of weeks, the average time that that room, that Zoom room has been open has been three and a half hours Wow, a week. So two and a half hours a week that starters, as we call them, are getting together one-on-one, four people in a room, six of them in a room, whatever. Two and a half hours above and beyond what we do officially. They're helping each other out, um, you know, encouraging each other really really, really cool stuff to see. So um, like Phil says, 10 X the cost. That's always our goal with everything you do. So congratulations, Gwen. This Yay, not Gwen. This literal book, but you know, a version of this. I need to ask Ray. I think he's updated it actually. Anyway. Um, what? I think it's a little bit better. Wait a second. Or, I need you know, to look real quick. Uh, because even the simple thing of the pastors, it's now pastors formula, not just pastor. More than Where is now. that? Um, yeah, this has the pastor framework. He is he's now on pastors. So, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it will, you'll be getting an updated version, Gwen, I, I believe. So awesome, guys. We will see you soon. And Gwen says, I hope you delete some of your our long recorded messages. Oh, I, no, I, I, I watch them in my spare time. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm like, nice. <laughs> I'm trying to eliminate stuff from my calendar and add to it. So, <laughs> all right, guys, we will see you. Uh, oh, next week, real quick. We don't know when we're going live next week. Yes. It will not be Maybe on Tuesday. Many times. Tuesday is family day in Phoenix. Um, it's travel day for Mark. So we'll be leaving for Phoenix on Sunday. 
and Mark will be leaving for Phoenix on Tuesday. I will also be getting there on Tuesday, just to be clear. I'm not driving. <laughs> I'm not taking a train. Um, I will get there the same day I Are leave. you riding a pack mule? All right. No, get it's a pack Stop. horse. All right. So next week, Facebook Live. We will not be on on Tuesday. I don't know when we will be on. It's entirely possible. We will not be on. We will miss you if we're not. But we're going to try to at least join you real quick um, yeah. from from PLF Live. Well, actually, in our case, Launch Club Live. Yep. And um, we will hopefully see you then. Bye, guys. See you guys.